Hello and welcome! Today is all about battery performance and endurance on the new DJI Osmo Action 6. How long can you record for off a single charge? How quickly can you recharge? And is overheating an issue? All this and more, coming up! The new DJI Osmo Action 6 has a lot in common with its predecessor, the Action 5 Pro, including the fact that they both use the same battery. Now, one key difference on the Action 6 is that it has a much larger sensor. But in spite of that, according to DJI at least, it matches the Action 5 Pro when it comes to battery performance, achieving up to four hours of recording time off a single charge. Now, it's important to point out that that is only achieved using low quality and energy saving settings, but it's an impressive specification nonetheless. So today we're going to be testing out that claim, not only using the energy saving settings, but using more real world settings. And of course, we're also going to test charging performance. So there's a lot to cover. So as usual, I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline. But first this guy. Before we continue with today's video, a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. Now I do include links to the featured products as well as my recording equipment. These may appear throughout the video and in the video description. If you purchase using these links, I may make a commission and this is what helps fund the channel. But rest assured, there is no price disadvantage to you, you are getting the best price I can find. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel, you could follow this link and buy me a coffee. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So back to the video. A few months ago, I posted this video testing the battery performance of the Action 5 Pro. And although my results didn't quite match up to DJI's claimed performance, the results were definitely good enough to confirm the Action 5 Pro as the champion of action cameras, at least when it comes to battery performance. And now we have the Action 6, and in spite of that same battery now powering a larger sensor, DJI is making the same runtime claim as the Action 5 Pro, four hours of recording on a single charge. Now, as already mentioned, that is only achieved using low resolution, low quality settings, and with pretty much every power hungry feature disabled. And although we will run that test, I didn't buy this camera to run it at low quality settings with all the value added features disabled. So the main focus for my test is going to be recording at 4K 30 frames per second with what I would consider normal settings. When it comes to charging performance, obviously we have the same battery and apparently the same charging circuitry because all of the claims are exactly in line with what we saw with the Action 5 Pro charging 0 to 80% in 22 minutes and fully charged to 100% in 52 minutes. Before we get to the results, a few notes about my testing. So the way I tested was to first set up all the parameters on the camera, then make sure the battery was completely at 100%, and then I started a continuous recording to see how long I could record for at those settings. Now, of course, this is not the way that most people use the camera. In most cases, you will be doing intermittent recordings and there will be periods where the camera is powered on and not recording. So in that situation, your total recording time will be slightly less than these numbers. The other point to make is that what you are recording also influences how long you can record for. You see, like most action cameras, the Action 6 uses what's called a variable bitrate. So for example, if you are filming a very dark or very bright scene with very little detail, the camera will use a low bit rate. And if you have a very detailed scene with lots of movement, the camera will use a high bit rate and using a higher bit rate consumes more power. So for my testing, I set up the camera filming a 4K nature video with lots of colors, lots of vibrancy and lots of movement to ensure that the camera was running at its maximum bit rate. So let's start out with verifying DJI's claimed four hours of runtime. So for this test, I set up the camera at 1080p, 24 frames per second, with every feature possible disabled in order to maximize the total runtime. And although I was able to run slightly longer than the Action 5 Pro, I was not able to confirm the four hour specification. 
with the camera running out of battery at just over 3 hours and 40 minutes. So a little bit short of DJI's claims, but still pretty impressive being able to record for 3 hours and 40 minutes. But it's important to emphasize that this is when running at 1080p with very limiting settings, which is not the way most people will be using the camera. So I repeated the test using 4K at 30 frames per second using what I would consider to be normal settings. And with those settings, the total runtime was drastically reduced to just over 2 hours and 12 minutes, which by the way was almost 20 minutes shorter than what I achieved with the Action 5 Pro. Now I did perform one additional test pushing the camera even further. I chose 4K 60 frames per second and the new custom mode which is basically a 3840 by 3840 image. And not surprisingly the runtime was considerably shorter coming in at just over 1 hour and 17 minutes. Now one issue that commonly surfaces during these endurance tests is overheating. And while I did experience overheating issues, I'm happy to report that it was only in the case of that last test running 4K 60 frames per second using the full sensor. And it only showed up in one of my runs where the camera shut down due to overheating after just over one hour and five minutes. However, I did experience a different issue, a somewhat strange one, and I experienced this in all recording modes. Now, when I do these endurance tests, I typically use the snapshot mode in order to maximize the amount of recording time because it starts up the camera and immediately starts recording. But for example, when using the snapshot mode in 4K, I would find that the camera would always stop recording and shut down after around about 32 minutes of recording time. And this happened consistently on every recording around about the same time with no error message and no indication of any issue. Now I think I know what's going on here and it goes something like this. As you may know, when you record for extended periods on a digital video camera, instead of getting one very large file, it breaks up the recording into multiple files. In the case of the Action 6, it's whenever the file reaches around about 17 gigabytes. Now, what seems to be happening, and again, this is only when using the snapshot mode, is when the Action 6 reaches that 17 gigabyte limit, instead of closing the file and opening the next file, there seems to be a bug which tells the camera that it's done, it stops the recording and shuts down the camera. Now, in order to test this, I use the snapshot also with the other modes. In the case of the 1080p test, the camera did the same thing around about 85 minutes. And in the 4K60 full sensor test, it shut down after just over 17 minutes. But sure enough, in all cases, it was right around the point where the file size reached that 17 gigabyte mark. Now, it's important to mention that this only occurs when you are using the snapshot mode. And hopefully this is something that DJI can resolve with a future firmware update. But for now, if you're planning on doing extended recordings, don't use the snapshot mode. When it comes to the in-camera charge tests, my setup is pretty straightforward, consisting of a high power charger and a stopwatch. All we need to do is plug in the camera and start the clock. And I have to say one feature I really do appreciate on the Action 6 and other DJI cameras is the always on display, which gives you a constant and accurate real time update of the charge status. Now before we get to the results, a quick word about my charge setup and a thank you to the people at Joyroom. Now this video is not sponsored or paid for in any way, but the people at Joyroom reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in testing out their latest fast charger, the Podix. Which as it turns out is exactly what I have been looking for, particularly for tests like these. Now firstly, the Podix is a fast charger capable of delivering up to 140 watts which is enough power to fast charge pretty much anything. In addition to the standard USB ports, you also have these two retractable USB cables, each capable of delivering up to 100 watts. And because they are retractable, it means you never have to look for the right cable and you don't have to have a mess of cables on your desk. Another feature which I really appreciate is the display, which can be set to show the total output, the individual output of each port, or you can even just have it show an emoji. 
And finally, the Podex can be placed in any orientation and is held firmly in place by the magnetic base. And yes, of course, you can rotate the display to match the orientation that works for you. Now, Joyroom have provided me with a custom link and a special discount code for TTL viewers, and I will be sure to include all of the information, including the latest updates in the video description. Now, unlike the runtime tests where we fell a little short of the claim performance, when it comes to the charging test, we were able to confirm DJI's claims. Charging from 0 to 80% within the specified 22 minutes, and reaching a 100% charge about 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Regular visitors to the channel will know that we have one more test left to do, and that is the Quick Charge Challenge. Now, if you want full details about the Quick Charge Challenge, check out this video, but in a nutshell, we take a fully depleted battery and we give it exactly 15 minutes of in-camera charging using the highest power charger that the camera will accept. And then we see how much recording time we can get using 4K, 30 frames per second, and all the normal settings that we discussed earlier. And from that test, we calculate what I refer to as the record to charge ratio, which is basically how many minutes of recording do you get for each minute of charging. Now, this is my current leaderboard for the quick charge challenge. And as you can see, the top spot is currently held by the Action 5 Pro, achieving over five minutes of recording time for each minute of charge. So let's see how the Action 6 compares. Well, first off in the charging portion of the test, the Action 6 managed to charge the battery to a pretty respectable 57%, which in the recording portion of the test managed to get us to just over 70 minutes of recording time. And if we do the math on that, that works out to a record to charge ratio of around 4.7 to 1, so just under 5 minutes of recording for every minute of charge time which is a pretty good result, but only gets it to third place in our rankings behind the Action 5 Pro and the Ace Pro 2. So basically, when it comes to battery performance of the Action 6, it's pretty much the same story as we saw with the Action 5 Pro. For the charging tests, we matched DJI's claim performance, but in the runtime test, we fell a little bit short. And the frustrating part is there's really no need for DJI to exaggerate their runtime claims. 3 hours and 40 minutes of 1080p or over 2 hours of recording at 4K is a very respectable result on a par with any action camera out there. So frankly, I think DJI should just be a little bit more realistic with their runtime claims. So that's going to cover it for battery performance on the Action 6. But be on the lookout for some follow-up videos on the Action 6, including memory card options, low-light performance, and of course, comparison to other popular action cameras. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop those into the comments section. Thanks for watching.